Hello, this is Lee with 3D Palace, and welcome to episode one, season one, of the Fleet Yard. Uh, in this series, what we do is we take you through my, let me emphasize that, my design process for original sci-fi spaceships. This is how I do it. This isn't the only way to do it. This might not even be the proper way to do it, but this is my way of doing it. So let's go ahead and get started. Also, as a side note, um, to encourage audience participation, you guys are going to be helping me along with certain design decisions. Um, so stay tuned till the end so that you can figure out uh, what exactly we're going to need help with in uh, deciding some things, okay? So first off, you'll see on the screen, we have my original ship design document. This is some of the things that I ask myself when I'm designing a ship. Or you'll be asking, say, your art director or whoever it is that you're designing the ship for. So first and foremost, you need to know, are we making a military ship or a civilian ship? You know, are we making like a civilian hauler? Or are we doing a military battleship? What are we doing? So is it military or civilian? Once we figure out what sector the ship is going to be servicing, we need to figure out what its role is. Is it a science ship? Is it a transport ship? Is it a patrol ship? A picket ship? You know, so forth and so on. Is it a ship of the line? All right, you know, is this a support vehicle? Is it a hauler? Is it an attack craft? What are we doing? Once we know what its role is going to be, you know, how big is it? Is it a cruiser? Is it a battleship? Is it a yacht? Is it a carrier? Is it a tanker? You know, what are we dealing with? Well, once we know what the sector is, its role, and how big it is, or the, its type, we need to know, is it in an established universe, or is this for an original universe? If it's an established universe, we can get um, references from other designs in that universe to try to fit it in. If it's an original design, we need to know, is it FTL? Uh, Capable of faster than light travel? Yes. If so, what kind? Um, what's its technology level? You know, are they using, you know, in, uh, are they using, you know, chemical rockets? Are they using, you know, matter and antimatter reactions? Fusion? You know, where are they at technologically? That'll help. That'll help with uh, details and, and things when it comes to the actual design of the ship. And then under here, I have just notes on details and level of greebleness. Um, basically, how detailed or greebly I want to make something uh, based on references or based on, uh, you know, um, input from the universe author or the books or, you know, if it's your own original universe, you know, how greebled or detailed you want to make it yourself. So that's what we're going to be working with here. Um, for this first series, for this first season, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick what we're going to be doing as far as this list goes. Um, in seasons to come, you guys will be picking what we're doing. But as of right now, I want to do a military ship. So we'll go ahead and underline that. I want to do a... Ship of the line. Better yet, we'll do... Yeah, we'll do a ship of the line. Er, yeah, we'll do a ship of the line. I want to do a cruiser. So, as far as cruiser goes, being a ship of the line, we're going to go ahead and do something like a battle cruiser. It's definitely going to be an original universe. Yes, it does have FTL. And I'm going to say it runs on hyperspace or hyper dimension. I'm going to say hyper dimensional travel. Kind of like hyperspace, but not. Um, for tech level, I'm going to say fusion. 
based um, probably mid near future. So I'm going to say it's probably about 100 to 200 years out. Okay. Notes on Griebel's and detail level. Um, this is going to be a mid detail ship. Um, mix of heavy plate and high Griebel areas. That's kind of my that's kind of my thing, so. All right, that's kind of how I do things. So now let's go ahead and head back to 3D Studio and I'll show you how I get ideas for basic shapes. All right, back into 3D Studio Max here. I'll turn the grid off. Okay. Ooh, excuse me. Now, a lot of guys will do what's called thumbnails and they'll do them in 2D with a pen and they'll, they'll have a thumbnail sheet and they'll draw a bunch of different shapes and see what looks cool and what doesn't and you know things like that I, I, I'm not a 2D guy I've tried and I just get a bunch of blobs on the paper I think in 3D I see in 3D so that's how I work basically how I go about it is I start with a box okay and default shading with edged faces please thank you so I start with a primitive okay and I either add primitives to it or I just start kind of pulling things and see what I get so if we go to Edible Poly say let's go ahead and Extrude this guy up a little bit. And let's go ahead and scale him in. And we'll do the same thing here. Now, obviously, this isn't the most effective way of doing this. You know, the most effective way would probably be, say, you know, using a 3D or a 2D, you know, type of approach, but... This is how I do it. So if we have a sh ship kind of like that, and then we can bring this back a little bit. Okay, and then maybe extrude it a little. Right? Okay. And then bring it back quite a bit here. Right? All right. And as far as his face goes, I'm definitely going to want to bring this in. Uh, let's go ahead and scale this in a little. There we go. A little bit of a bow. All right. And then maybe we'll throw, let's see. We'll throw a reactor, say, right here, or, you know, something. Kind of take that out that way. Height segments down. And we're going to intersect this with the model. So it sticks out on both sides. Okay. That's good. Probably want that a little bit forward this is going to be our engine area back here and then maybe have a box come off say back here maybe like a wing or something okay or two and a poly go ahead and scale this in 
Okay. Yeah, let's just move this. So it's got a little bit of a rake to it. Okay. And let's possibly do something along the lines of a small cylinder here. Bring that out. And convert that to a notable poly. Let's move it to about here. Move it down. That intersects. Okay. It's good. I'm going to rotate the whole thing. So it lines up. Okay, bring it down. Okay. Now if we bring in the whole thing, we can put it here. Probably make it a bit bigger. What do you guys think? Both of them a bit bigger here. Okay. Yeah, I'm not taking it. But we'll leave it. We're not going to delete anything. And we're going to just basically keep, you know, keep things. And that's about as far as I want to go with this one for right now. You know, what we could do is add one more thing here. If we go here, we can extrude this a little bit. Okay, and then scale it. So we have that engine area there. And we'll leave that one for now. Get a general idea of it. We'll move on to something else. So if we come over here, we're going to grab another box. Okay. Now this one, if we do something along the lines of or just to a noble poly. And I want you. You. We're going to champ for that out. Okay. That works for me. Turn that off. Now I'm going to want another box. Oh, like so. Okay. And then we'll do another box off the top of this. This will be the top part here. Gonna move this into position. Want it over sticking a little bit. Okay. And convert this to an edible poly. And I'm going to grab this and this. And I'm going to chamfer. Okay. I'm going to grab this. And not this. And chamfer. You want the bottom two, maybe? Do I? Yeah, it's not quite how I was seeing it in my head. It's not quite how I was seeing it in my head. Let's go ahead and scale this up a bit. A 
move it. That's closer. Okay. And let's go ahead and scale it this way. That's closer. All right. Let's turn that off because we need to center it. Okay. I like. Now off of here, we'll grab another box. It will kind of act as our backbone here. Okay. Go ahead and convert this to an edible poly. And let's grab these and ring it. Throw a connect on it. Okay. We want these. We'll ring this. Throw another connect on it. You know, I want to grab this guy and move him up. Then I can grab this guy, move him up like so. Now this guy, let's go ahead and chamfer. We loop it. That'll give me that shape. Okay. Bring this face down a little bit, maybe. There go. Now, come on back over here. Grab another box. Pull them out. Maybe not so much. Go ahead and grab a edible poly. Move them on back a little bit. This guy here. This guy here. And throw a chamfer. Okay. And then this guy here, throw another box on him. About like so. Okay, move him on up. Convert him to an edible poly. Now you might think that always oh, making detail, well, kind of, and no, not really. Um, what I'm doing is I'm getting a basic idea of where I can put certain main structural pieces here. So, do I want to do something with this down here, or do I want, you know, do I want to put you know, another box? Do I want a cylinder? Do I want a sphere? What do I want? So I think what we're going to do is we're going to put a box. And we're going to take it from here up to about here. Bring them on down. Okay. It's going good. And then might come over here. Grab this chamfer, just like so. And I'm thinking, take this, a ring. Grab that in the ring. Just go ahead and throw a connect on it. Okay. And 
And I'm going to do something with my selection. I want to put a constraint on edge constraint. And I'm going to use my tool to flatten it out. Okay. And now with edge constraint still on, I'm going to chamfer. Okay, and then on top of that, I'm going to flatten them both out again. All right. And then I should be able to move them up so that we're roughly center. Okay, and we can turn constraints back off. Because now, I'm going to grab this. I want to move them out a little bit. Okay. Now with this, I definitely need to move this guy out a little bit. Alright, that's good. Alright. Would have been easier just to, you know, connect those two together, but it's alright. It'll work. And then maybe come over here. What we can do is actually extrude this. And grab the face, move forward so that it intersects. Okay, and that's looking okay so far. Okay, now I'm thinking I can use some roundness here so let's go ahead and grab this and make them fairly large because he's going to move I'm over on this side so I can see what I'm doing okay that's pretty good back a little bit and we can probably make his radius a little smaller so he fits into the geometry better. Okay. And then maybe take something off the bottom here. If we grab a box, maybe. So it's off the bottom here. And bring them down. Oop. Nope, that's not what we want. We want flat. Why aren't you giving me a flat face? What's wrong with you? There we go. Alright. Let's move him back. Where he's supposed to be. And move him up here. Okay, and let's go ahead and make this an edible poly. We're starting to spend too much time on this. We might have to move on. Let's bring that forward. Okay, come back over to here. This guy I'd like to bring down. That looks good. And I think over here, if we come off of this guy, this will give me a decent flat point right around here. Okay. And then I'd like something off of here. So let's go ahead and do a box. Um, well, like so. Okay. And then we can bring down another box. 
about like so. And then I'm thinking maybe like a reactor cylinder here. And of course we want to do something with this box here too. It's not necessarily where we want it, but it's not terrible. Okay, now you gotta remember most of this stuff is gonna be mirrored over to the other side and shapes are not necessarily gonna stay the way they are, but there you go. So we have that one. And maybe do one more. So we've gone kind of vertical. So let's go and do something a bit different and go more horizontal here. Okay. And convert this to an edible poly. So I'm going to go ahead and grab these guys and ring it throw a connect on it this will be the last one for today guys go we'll go ahead and chamfer okay because I want to grab this face move them out okay I'm gonna go ahead and grab these grab a cut Move it across. Same thing here. Okay. And let's go ahead. Grab this guy, move him down. That's good. And then let's say we want to do a uh, cylinder here, small one, roughly the same size, but a little taller. Okay. A box will act as our superstructure type of thing. I don't know why that's off. Yeah, that is really weird. The whole thing is off. Oh. Let's try this again. Should be auto grading. I yeah, see it's weird. All right, let's try local. Yeah, no, nope, still doing it. Weird. All right, I don't know, Max is acting up on me, guys, so we're going to go with the two that we have. Um, 